back to part three. A little bit of Christmas spirit. We're wearing our Santa hat uh, with the mask and besides, and a little bit of green. Well, hello again. Need anything forged? And we need to decide which uh, item to make plus six. And then that'll be the one we need to carry us through. I think since I went through the trouble of getting it on the, the bonus video last time, the Eito, we're going to go ahead and upgrade that one a bit. See, I'm going to need seven more Titanite. Or we could use this guy. Yeah, we could use the washing pole. Get the extra reach going. Oh, that's right, I wanted to actually get some use out of Ricard's Rapier, since we're running a build that can make some fairly optimal use of it. The decks for some scaling, and then enchanting it to get the bonus hits. Let's do that. Back to Sun's Fortress. We have one stop to make before we get to the boss, and that is the group of enemies in the tar down there. I don't know if I showed them off last time. We're going to need to gear up for, 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 uh, for those guys. Uh, let's try... Actually, that looks pretty good. They're pretty tough customers. The, I'll go ahead and show off a couple different ways of attacking them, but the basic uh, issue is that a lot of enemies that we've been dealing with We've been able to count on the stagger effect of using these great swords, the claymore and the flamberge. And when you're two-handing a weapon, it does even more poise damage. That helps make up for the fact we don't have a shield. Helps handle the that helps even that helps too. But it helps handle the fact we don't have a shield. Ooh, this time that one. But yeah, you see how those that hit just uh, completely staggered him. and left him unable to, left him wide open for another hit. There is a window on that. You notice the second hit didn't stagger him again. You have an enemy that's, if you hit them while they're being staggered, it's all part of the same. You know, poise kind of fills up the same as, like, toxic and, and bleed and things like that. You know, it just doesn't work if they're already being affected by it. This guy is our first target. I don't, you can do a plunging attack, but it's, there's, it's nowhere near enough damage to kill him. And then that just leaves you right up next to an angry, you know, Titanite demon. So we're going to go ahead and drop down here first. Heal up. And then, ooh, I don't have the right item for this. Just a second, dude. We just need to get out of his reach. And switch rings. I'm leaving the covetous gold ring for now because they drop an item that could be useful to us. It has some end scaling. Yeah, they're another enemy that's, that's so big they have that kind of shockwave after their attacks. Ah. Ooh. Yep, same as last time. If they catch you in that swing pattern, that's, that's pretty much it. Yeah, the rusted iron ring works as well in the tar as it does on the, uh, in the swamp. Let's see if we can get a hit in on him. I think he's too far away, but... Yeah, he's too far away. Got a little bit of a start, so that... Yeah, that's kind of what I mean. It's like he had, he, he just has trouble dealing with us if we're too close to him. His, his answer is to use that move. Likewise, if you can get into an animation. Oh, we did get a stagger on him. Okay. Now, I was meaning to show off how useless split damage weapons would be. Oh, sweet, I got I, I got the item. Perfect. I was, I was trying to show off how, how problematic the split damage weapons are against him. The flamberge, was, <clears throat> since I put on the enchanted path, you know, splits its, splits its damage between physical and magic. It adds uh, in scaling, lowers the rest. I think I mentioned that last time. And the way that the damage system works in Dark Souls is you want to get as high above the enemy's defense rating as possible. Well, as giant, you know, animate, you know, slams of metal, the Titanite demons have, okay, 
The Titanite Demons have a very large uh, physical defense rating for the time you fight them. For the times you fight them, you know, it gets higher the later you go in the game. The, the spoiler, there are multiple Titanite Demons. And, and they also tend to be resistant to everything but lightning. That's a grab attack. If if it catch if they catch you with the uh, with the with the pull, it will actually pull you into a grab move. It does a fair bit of damage. That's another reason why it's good to crowd them. They tend to try to try to do that move, which, as you can see, is very easy to dodge. There's another one down. That's two out of four. And another <laughs> demon titanite and catch pull. Right, this one is a yeah, soul item. This one should be a Bardiche. They call it a scythe. I think the intention there was to go for a war scythe. You know, the times when you actually saw them used in, you know, historical military, it was to take off the uh, the blade of the scythe. You could basically tilt at a 90 degree angle. And, oh, got hit by... Did she fall down? No, they're still up there. You guys caught me as I ran to the corner. Something else you have to look out for. And, uh, but that's not quite what, what the weapon we just picked up was. Now this one is kind of tricky, whereas the last guy waited until we were pretty much close enough to hug him to attack us. The second guy in the back will jump in the fight as soon as it starts. So that's what we brought Hidden Body for. Now he won't see us. And now we can get going. Like what, he didn't even see us. Roll one, roll two. Oh, I think I got caught by his... Uh... I didn't realize the tail could hit you there. Treat out of this one. The problem with uh, deal with fighting with fighting him, where the sorceresses are still alive, is they'll go ahead and attack you uh, while you're while you're trying to deal with them. Oh, that didn't work. So let's go ahead and take a break <laughs> from this, and let's go deal with these three. Luckily, you should be able to get a spot where. Yeah, you can hit them. They can't really hit you. And that's the other reason we switched with the extra great soul arrows. I had a feeling this would happen. Okay, that's a problem. You can also go back up to the uh, to the platform. There we go. You can also go back up to the platform. Go, go past the, the blades and the other manserpent up there and drop down and deal with them from uh, from above. That works too. But since we're a sorcerer, you know, it helps to be able to put our skills to, be, to, to work and help out there. Okay, once again, hidden body again. This time we're going to go ahead and try to open up with the great soul arrow because I'm... Yeah, he, I'm pretty sure he moved back to, he moved back to base. It, we're doing a lot less damage to this guy than the previous ones. I wonder if he has like a higher, uh, you know, rating or like, like he's considered a higher level than the others. Switching to the R2, both to do more damage and to try to get a stagger in there. Oh, one shotted. Ouch. Yeah, I think that's a good indication. I think he really is higher level than the, the other two. So this guy again, another hidden body. Make sure the fight's one-on-one. -on -one. And actually, we're going to go ahead and... For the reason why I invested in this earlier, is the scaling is, uh, is good. So we're actually going to go, uh, we're actually going to go ahead, go to that, buff it up, and get our free shot, because why not? Be opened up with a ring attack would be even better. Oh, that's even less damage. Okay, I didn't see that coming. Oh, that's uh, 
Call for strategic withdrawal on that one. Well, I thought the club would have carried me through, but you know, the, uh, the damage it's getting is too low to make up for it. You know, the fact that I'm adding two damage sources together with the uh, uh, with the flambearish was actually making it come out ahead. So let's switch to this and do pretty much the same thing. Should be getting a bit more damage. Ooh, that did. Oh, okay. At least I managed to get out of the way. <laughs> call that a, call that an even trade. That's another one of those attacks. It, you either want to get really far out of his reach or really close when he goes for the, the big swing. I think I may have accidentally alerted the other one by not recasting invisibility. Yeah, you can see he's, he's joining in. So, let's go ahead and use our last one. Go ahead and reset the fight. Was the plan, anyway. Oh, right in the face. We know from before he can pretty much one-shot us if we're not careful. Okay, the invisibility got him to leave us alone for a little bit. It's about to wear off, so I'm not going to risk the... Go, rolled around him. Yeah, I think, as strange as it sounds, I think the Flambearge was actually doing the most damage. Two... At this point, I think I'm going to go ahead and try to finish this guy off. Make it a fair fight with the other one. Ah. That's the thing, too, about dealing with these guys. They tend to... If they can't reach you physically, they'll try to turn it into a, a sniper fight. Of course, their reach is pretty long. <laughs> You can also see by how little damage these these blasts of 100 are doing to him. That's how much HP we're talking about. So one should be good. Should need two more, I think. We also got a stagger there now that it's no longer really useful. Okay, so it's almost all of our firepower to deal with that. Let's go ahead and try... Let's go ahead and try this one out. It is a higher rating, and we'll be able to actually see if the magic bonus helps out in this fight. It's probably also going to start... Yeah, we can, we can lock, lock onto him from quite a ways away. The rain, Yeah, from further than we can actually shoot him. <laughs> yeah, my, my goal was to try to... There we go. Let's try to get him to... I start casting. Give me time to do this. I'm just stuck in the animation for quite a while. I yeah, didn't expect that. Yeah, the, the area of effect on that plunge move. Oh, that was too early. <laughs> Not great damage. I think he got me. Yep, he got me. Yep. That's the other drawback. We try to get close and get boxed in like that. It's one of the things I like about Dark Souls, the fact the terrain is that much of a factor. Yeah, much better damage this time. We're doing 100 last time. We're doing about double that with with these upgrades. Now you might be wondering how a 20% hat and a 20% ring are totaling up to 100% damage. And that all goes back to what I was talking about earlier with the 
uh, the system where you want to exceed their yeah yeah you want to exceed their health by or their defenses by that certain margin. I wonder, can I use hidden body to sneak up on him and get in range of a great heavy soul arrow? Looks like probably not. Well, regardless, it still works. We already got our Titanite Catch Bolt. That's a big reason why you'd want Item Find and the Gold Serpent Ring again for this fight. And I think that should probably do it. There we go. Oh, definitely more of a hassle than needed to be. But we got it. Let's go ahead and, and this is also a good chance to showcase the other thing you can do in this area. The ladder that I climbed up briefly to, to escape and put the rusted iron ring on actually leads up to the guy that rang the bells of awakening. Or that opened the gate once I rang the bells. That is one of the giants. And every single I believe every single giant, yeah, I could be mistaken, but I believe all of them have a guaranteed chance of drop or guaranteed drop of a Titanite chunk. Those are pretty tough to get, so you know, definitely worth it. They don't drop anything else, which is why I don't need to worry about raising my humanity here. And let's go ahead and try the Ricard's Arabia trick again. See if it works any better this time. Hey, thanks for opening the gate. Let's see, he's not too. Uh, not too happy to be uh, to meet us. A stomp is a warning that he'll be doing that attack. That's probably your best time to do some damage to him. Obviously, you want to make sure all of your hits are going through. There we go. Yeah, it's not a great amount of damage, but there and there's a chunk. It's not a great amount of damage, but it's fairly quick. You do get quite a few hits. I think something like that would work even better in Dark Souls 2, where you have that item that increases the poise damage you do on each hit. Did I deal with those guys already? I don't think I did not. Okay, so another hidden body to make this fight miss part easier. And likewise, let's get the our axe back on. Buff this up. Bring him to us. That'll work. And get that stagger. This is, a, this is the shortcut. This will take us back to the top of Sun's Fortress. We'll go ahead and hop back in the... Or, <clears throat> use that bonfire again. And while I've got my buff going... There we go. Oh, he didn't like that. <laughs> Oh, I actually got a humanity from killing him. Yeah, as a rule of thumb, the humanoid enemies tend to be the ones that count for that. You know, like the in, in Blighttown, for example, I think the only enemies that actually count for, you know, for the up to ten, uh, you know, held humanity you can get, are the the uh, the, the big barbarians. You know, the the bugs. Uh, none of them actually uh, actually count. Since we're going up against the boss fight now, let's go ahead and change our loadout. The invisibility will do no good. These would be great, but we can't use them. Uh, let's go ahead... Yeah, let's to toss a couple of those on. And... 
Yeah, that'll do. We'll also switch weapons. Because uh, this is one of those few bosses you actually have to take a look at before you fight. So yeah, we will be switching weapons, and I will show you why when we get there. Although first, it wouldn't hurt to go over and take care of this guy one more time. See if we can get a uh, another large Titanite shard from him. Hello. <laughs> Inches short. Nah. There we go. Looks like... Looks like not. Okay. Probably should have put the ring back on first, in retrospect. Let's go up and around. Yeah, before we took that detour, we were actually right at the, the boss, basically. The first part of Sen's Fortress can be a bit of a slog. The second part, not not too bad at all. <laughs> There's our Balder Crossbowman. Only one of his type in the entire game. Throwing off that run attack there. Now we can go across the... Uh, the area here. There's their NPC summon. We won't be needing him for this, though. And But yeah, I promised to look at the, a glimpse of the boss. And there he is. You actually get a chance to, to take a look at him before the fight starts. He is invincible during this. He actually isn't an, isn't an object at all. If you try to fire an arrow, it'll go right through him. Stuff like that. But yes, he is a golem, so we're going to want a strike weapon. Yes. Wood trumps metal, apparently. So we're using our club and buffing it up. It's tempting to try using the try using the soul mass spell, the soul mass spell before you go into a door, but it, the fog actually uh, you know evaporates them. Also interesting, normally that air attack of his, which you can also do with his boss soul weapon, it just hits the ground uselessly. That's why I didn't do anything. I wasn't expecting it to actually hit me. The Iron Golem, the main, uh, the main issue with fighting him is the type, is that, it has very weird hitboxes, <laughs> but it's the tiny arena you're, you're, you're actually fighting him in, compared to how big he is. And it's very easy for you or him to actually get knocked off of it. There we go. And the gimmick for this one is that as you hit his feet, he totters and falls. That's your chance to get some damage in on him. So we're going to go ahead and do just that. Let him back up because of how much damage it uh, adds. And this time we're going to go ahead and get some distance. Crossing this safely. Let's bait a swing if we can. Yeah, his, his attacks have enough lag that it gives you a chance to uh, get around him. You know, yeah, and I'm glad that he, he showed that off. You notice how he kind of appeared to reach behind himself uh, for that. Yeah, you, if you actually try to cross between his legs to avoid the grab the way you can most of his other attacks, uh, he'll, he'll get you. That actually doesn't work. And that's that. He's worth quite a few souls, too. Uh, 40,000, I believe. Yeah, there they are. Ring of Light. We are off to Anne Rolando.
it is pretty awesome for a site of Anna Wanda. So got our baseball bat. <laughs> Okay. Yep. They're definitely one of the coolest locations. Unfortunately, we won't, we won't actually be able to interact with, with most of this. You know, I mentioned that one of the cool things about Dark Souls was how you, you if you see an area, you tend to get to be able to go into it. Not much. You know, most of this you, you not does, no longer applies. Um, we're restricted to this building, you know, part of it, over there, and then the big castle. Which isn't bad. I mean, it's still it's still a pretty big zone, a lot of fun. But yeah, there's, there's it, it, this is just to give you a sense of scope, basically. Our primary enemy for the first part of An Rolando are these uh, the royal the Sentinels. I almost said royal. We'll, we'll be dealing with other Sentinels later. They look like golems. They aren't actually. They're uh, they're they're giants, and as such, they can bleed. So we're going to go ahead and switch to the uh, the Flamberge again. Generally, they, they don't attack. Or generally, they have a pretty short uh, aggro range. So that gives you a chance to usually get the first, first blood on them. I also tend to not, not like locking on for them, because that big uh, shield is invincible completely. Your, your attacks have to get around it, basically. Oh, we don't need the rusted ring anymore. What am I doing? Do that. But yes, the, the shield uh, completely blocks attacks that come toward it. We'll go ahead and show that off by getting the first shot on him. Then as he approaches, the soul mass spells are going to zoom in and do nothing. And the, yeah, the range is so short, the guy in the back is just apparently uh, watching this happen. Not a, not a thought in the world. The two swings on there seem, seem like overkill for somebody like me who got knocked down by the first hit. But actually they're there if you try blocking them with a shield, the way the game expects most people to. I'm also going to go ahead and switch off our uh, TR. I probably shouldn't have been using that for the boss fight even. Yeah, that's a little little overkill in the sorcery. Yeah, if you have a shield and try to block that attack, the first hit will drain most, if not all, of your stamina, and the second one's designed to finish you off. Yeah, there's my, there's my attack getting blocked by that shield. If you try to circle around them to get behind it, they off, that's when they tend to try to jump away. And to kind of reset the fight, make you come back to them. Start the whole thing all over. But you can get around it. Let's see what it says. Try chest. Eh, don't mind if I do. Another Demon Titanite. Yeah, we got quite a few of them down there. <clears throat> Demon Titanite is used for boss weapons. We'll be able to make those at the end of this level. I say at the end, close to the end. We can technically access him a little, a little before we get to the boss. And here is a bonfire, also with a firekeeper. So let's go ahead and press up and check our check out our spells. We're going to want hidden body again, and yeah, let's go and use magic weapon. Yeah, we'll, let's stick with the rest of the stuff for now. Actually, I think. Yeah, yeah, the rest of the stuff will work for now. It'll also be a good time to level up, too, come to think of it. We want decks of at least 22 for the next batch of weapons we'll be using. And I think after that, I'm just going to go ahead and start putting points into intelligence. Yeah, we definitely want to get that high enough to use Soul Spear. And which requires 36 in this game, I believe. Well, you are a rare visitor. Welcome to the lost city of Anor Londo, chosen undead. If you seek Lord Gwyn's old keep, exit here, 
and head straight yonder. If you are the chosen one, a revelation shall visit thee. What follows thereafter depends upon you. Interesting. <clears throat> it seems like she's kind of backing up what Framp was saying. Hmm. What is it? What am I? Well, I am the keeper of the bonfire. If not for me, <laughs> what beacon would there be in this lost city? A gatekeeper and a guide. That is my calling. It's actually pretty... What she says there is kind of interesting. We'll find out the full, full like, you know, we'll find out exactly why it's so interesting later. Uh, and actually, I think that the game is smart enough to know not to use... Uh, I can't tell from here which... Which Firekeeper's soul is which of... Uh, Oh, sorry, no, no. We will be getting one later. If you I keep rest, thinking that when Latrek kills time, Anastasia, that, that her Firekeeper soul cool. is dropped with the rest of her equipment what and to make sure not to use it. For. But no, no, he still has it, of course. So we have two generic Firekeeper souls, and it's a good idea to use one of them up here to upgrade. And as a fire, Firekeeper bonfire, this is automatically kindled. So, on we go. That'll be our next destination over there. For now, we're going to go here first and finish exploring. Two more sentinels. Actually, three. Oh, the guy off to the right has an aggro range so short, I don't think... You pretty much have to go out of your way to attack him. <laughs> Let's go there. That gives you an idea for how... I don't, I don't know exactly how much poise damage a heavy soul arrow does. But it's you're clearly enough to stagger them in one hit. Yeah. Normally roll attacks are pretty good for getting around for getting around shields like that. So there's another one. Got kinda of, kinda of gambled on that one. Did not did not work. There's actually a bit of a shockwave on that shield bash attack, too. I'll probably <clears throat> show it off, air quotes, accidentally. Okay. Another sign, too, uh, in addition to just kind of knowing where the mimics are. You see, most treasure chests look like that. Uh, the one with a chain draped toward you is a pretty clear sign you're dealing with, uh, dealing with an enemy. You can also kind of take a close look in on them. Yeah. You can see them, you can see them breathing. It's a very neat touch. Okay. Oh, I took uh, soul mass off. Right, right. Oh, we don't need it. I love that kick attack. Hitboxes on it are weird, as you as you can see. Okay. <laughs> That'll work for me. And we get a crystal halberd. The crystal path uh, sharply cuts a weapon's durability in exchange for raising its base damage and scaling quite a bit. Yeah, the angle he comes in on, it's usually possible to get two hits on him. Actually, oh, not quite all three. He, yeah, he's just a little too quick on the shield for, for three. There we go. Oh, not quite. There we go. <laughs> Death cab. Hey, you you missed me dying to a Titanite Demon three times. Uh, that that was probably your best chance to make. Well, I can't say best chance. I'm here in I'm here at Anor Orlando, so there'll be plenty more chances to make fun of me for being bad. But uh, yes, yes. Uh, the best chance best chance of the night may have come and gone. We, we will see. I thought that was just enough to level up. Just enough, indeed. And yeah, you see the, the right weapon adjustment. Raising my intelligence helps out quite a bit because of the way an enchanted weapon 
prioritizes int scaling, lowers everything else. You haven't even hit the cathedral yet. Yes. <laughs> I'm actually not... Well, here's the funny thing. It's like, I'm actually not that bad at, uh, at this part because I've played Anor Londo so often. You know, I, I did a lot of PvP back in the day. But uh, I have been doing worse at easy areas than I ever have before on this run. It, it is uncanny. I'm kind of keeping a running total of you know, which mid-bosses give you the most grief. Yes, yeah, so if, you're, if you're in for a terrible... Well, here is a mid-boss right now. Let's see, let's see how this goes. Just like the other gargoyles, you can... <clears throat> well, you can stagger them, of course. But you can uh, you can cut off their tails, get another battle axe. They all, they're also an additional chance of dropping the helmet and shield, which we didn't get from either gargoyle last time. Yeah, too slow on that one. Speaking of too slow, he's not doing much better against us. As long as you don't die to a gargoyle, right. <laughs> Well, there, there's another axe, okay. <laughs> yeah, that, that, yeah, exactly. If you... Uh, the the gargoyle equipment counts, counts the same as... Uh, ooh. It counts the same as everything else that... Uh, or there's a finite number of enemies that drop them. Um... Then you know, once you kill the last one, you'll automatically get everything they could you could have gotten er earlier. So yeah, the last gargoyle will indeed give you everything. Yeah, there's a helm. So I will at least be getting the shield next time. Gargoyle equipment is good all around. It's you know the the helmet has pretty much all all good resistances in exchange for not being exceptionally good physically. And likewise, the shield has, I think, only 85% physical block, but it's uh, good at everything else. Alright, now for the church. We're going to go ahead and switch to a weapon that will help us out with the guys in here. They have no poise, so the important thing we need is reach and speed. So, I'm going to try this. Two, three. Oh, f four is not good. Three hits I can deal with. Four is a problem. Yeah, I probably have to switch to something a little more, a little more dangerous. Let's see, what would a good choice be? Well, I could probably try two-handing the rapier. It is always silly. Yep. Okay. Let's give it a try. Now, the issue with this part is the painting guardians here can find you from quite a ways away. So we're going to go ahead and get, actually get the drop on them. We're going to go invisible so they won't uh, detect us from a, from a distance. And get close enough to uh, lock on and kill them. If this seems wasteful, spell slot wise, uh, keep in mind that, well, I can't say keep in mind, you might not know, but there is another bonfire coming up. The biggest drawback of this strategy is, well, one, it wearing off, of course. But two, while I was transparent, I couldn't actually see myself. <laughs> okay, so another hidden body. And this time, we'll just go ahead and one-shot him with the Great Heavy Soul Arrow. So close enough. Oh, that was close. There we are. And to go ahead and do this all in one trip, we're going to go ahead and drop down here. Next to the very interesting statues. The first one is right through here. 
Not much point to this, actually. I believe it's just one Divine Blessing, but it's, it's kind of fun, and it's just been a habit of mine to do it. Plus, you get additional chances to get the Painting Guardian Swords, which are a weapon I may consider using if I get one. As a matter of fact, let's go ahead and make that... Yeah, it is a bit more likely, okay. Because it scales very well with the decks. And it bleeds, which I'm a fan of. Yeah, Death Cab pointed out that the Gargoyle Shield is also good for lightning resistance. Really? The Titanite Demon attack? Yeah, I knew about the... the uh, I knew about how like, the, the Stray Demon does magic damage, and I think Quaylog does too, actually, even though you think they'd be fire. But you're saying the, the attacks that look like they're lightning are actually magic, some of them? Well, that explain why gearing up for lightning resistance never helped against the Wyverns. Alright, through this fog is the... Uh, this area will be a... We'll be, in, we'll, be doing, we'll be here a lot. Let's just say that. Uh, if I remember right, it's counterclockwise and move it down. Is that right? Yes, counterclockwise and move it down. And we'll move it down one more. Is that close enough? Okay, he did, he did end up here. I love that trail effect when you when you use those particle effects on a uh, uh, on when your elevation is changing. Didn't mean to do that, but good, fair enough. I'm pretty sure that went through him. I think he counted it. <laughs> yeah, fighting on stairs is great for just seeing how seeing how the game tries to handle. Uh, you know, these, these hit boxes. <laughs> oh, he dodged it. There we go. The <laughs> yes, hit, yeah, fun with hit boxes. This is, um, this is quite the comedy of errors here. <laughs> okay, let's just try to finish him off. <sighs> wow, that was that was pretty wild. There we go. The oh, I didn't get the halberd the first time either. Right, I'd forgotten about that. Halberd is another good. <clears throat> the the gargoyle halberd is another good uh, all around weapon. It has the uh, it's probably it's, it's simply put probably the best of the um, the weapons that are more more axe halberdy than uh, spear halberdy. If, if that's the the right word for it. All right, this give an, give us another spot to reattune spells. And this time I'm going to go ahead and do something a little little different. Uh, we're going to go ahead and use the... Um, what would be a good weapon for this part? Yeah, we'll use the um, the, the Flamberish one last time. Because we want to have Hush as well as uh, Hidden Body for a part coming up. So I, so I, don't, I, think you, I don't think you can use both of them. I think you need either the Ring... Plus hush, right? You can't use both of them, so we will be just using hidden body. Yeah, I didn't do any. <clears throat> you get the ring of fog by winning three battles with the forest hunters. I didn't do that. I broke the covenant to uh, kill Shiva and his bodyguard. You can go and get forgiveness and rejoin them, but I didn't see much point in that. You can also get the slumbering ring, which is the ring that muffles your movements in Sense Fortress. I probably should have got that when I came back for it. So once I had the shortcut un unlocked, uh, I did not, so that may be a problem here. So I'll just go ahead and use this. Okay. And then we won't be needing magic weapons, so great. Okay. 
So regular great heavy, great heavy soul arrow, great soul arrow, and soul mass. That should do. Oh yeah, and we'll be switching back to. Oh, that's right. Yeah, I kind of wanted to show off the Titanite catch pole. No, it's, it's a good weapon for this part. He asks, do I have the Skull Lantern yet? No, I plan on using Cast Light. This is a Spellblade run. It seems like a good, uh, seems like a good way of doing it. Um, let's see, yeah, I was going to upgrade. Tight weapons that go on the tight, the Twinkling Titanite path, as well as armor for the most part, cost a lot more than the others. Uh, and you saw how the the Dragon King Great Axe was grayed out. That's because dragon weapons require ten thousand souls per upgrade, so they're they're pretty pr uh, pretty pricey. The catch poles require two thousand a pop. I have enough to upgrade three times, and I think I will do so. You can see they don't scale very well with anything, but they have very high bases. So let's go ahead and switch it in. Catch pole plus three. There you go. I'm sure they didn't put me into fat roll. Yeah, there is a very infamous, infamously difficult spot coming up, and which, is, which becomes a lot easier if you are both uh, invisible and inaudible. You may think that would be that would apply to most situations, but in Dark Souls, all it really does is shortens the range enemies detect you. It doesn't make it impossible. There are rings that do both of those things. The spells tend to work a little bit better in exchange for having not only a finite number of times you can use them, but having a limited duration. All right, up we go. Yeah, those two guys on the right, you can see they, they look just like the uh, the critters that brought us to Anor Orlando. Uh, yeah, not sure why they helped us in the first place, except maybe a callback to Demon Souls, but there's a similar incident. Although in that case, the whole point was to lure you to the boss. I guess you wanted your soul. You can, you can take advantage of the elevation here to get some hits uh, around their guard. Try to use that rolling slash there. There we go. Once you get too far away from their posts, they'll, they'll slowly walk back toward them. Ooh. Yeah, if I've been using the regular Soul Arrow, I might have been able to pull that one off. Gotta be careful with my Estus here. There is another bonfire coming up. Ah. There's another bonfire coming up, but it requires that aforementioned tricky part to get to. There we go. I like the follow-up attack on the on the catch pole as well as some other halberd weapons because it switches it from the the, the overhead swing to a side swing. It helps you deal with when enemies that have that fixed uh, shield position. These guys. You want to engage at range if you can help it. Can't always. But yeah, generally your range attacks a little more reliable than theirs. It also helps that yeah. Doesn't help if you're in if, if you're in it for the drops. But if you just want to kill them. <laughs> sometimes they kill themselves if you just want to kill them. And there's one more. Okay. Hard part coming up. Let's use one of our hidden bodies. As well as a oh yeah, that, that arrow that went that zinged our way. That's a that's that's the warning sign. There we go. Oh, didn't quite do it. I was counting on the stagger from the soul mass to uh, give me an opening. And it kinda did, it just wasn't enough to finish the job. Ah. 
Jeez. I hadn't realized just how much range these guys have. They usually fight them at a distance. Oh, that was close. I knew it was getting close to the uh, to the to the firing zone, but <laughs> okay. Yes, the problem, as you can see, well, kind of. You see that guy on the, on the left center of the screen there? That is one of the enemies that will be making up the bulk of the next part of Anor Londo, and they come in three varieties: sword, spear, and bow. And the bow guys will pull a sword if you get close to them. Uh, at this particular point, they are firing Dragon Slayer arrows uh, right at us. They cannot be blocked. Uh, they, they will knock you down pretty much no matter what you do. Well, they'll knock you back no matter what you do. They'll knock you down if you can't, if your shield, if your stability can't handle it. And yeah, Demon Spears, when you use them, are also the... I think they're tied with the, their own Silver Spears for the, for the best range. Okay. Last Estus Flask, gotta make this count. What I like to do is wait for the barrage to stop to make sure you have enough time for the uh, for the one use of hidden body to get you all the way through. Which look, they're definitely keeping the there we go. They definitely keep the barrage up for a while. <laughs> so let me go ahead, hidden body. We're gonna round the corner before they get a chance to attack us. Homing Soul Mass to make this part easier. Because you gotta take this guy out before it before it gets bad. And it is possible, depending on your angle, to get sniped in the back by the other guy. That, that's, uh, yeah, you're pretty much done if that happens. But that's how you do it. Use the invisibility so they can't attack you while you're on the, the, the approach. And then just take out the first guy. And bonfire. Hidden body is still useful for this part, but not as much. I mean, you're generally, uh, you'll never really be attacked by more than more than one at a time. You know, two if you're not careful, but that's about it. Yeah, Death Cab also points out you can parry them. Yeah, uh, how parrying works is if you if it, if it, if you can parry the attack, like it's a normal melee attack and within the frames of your swing, uh, it'll actually deflect it and you kind of get a chance to repost the enemy to extra damage. If you can't, then you go into this, uh, this partial parry where you uh, reduce the damage by, I think it's about half the damage reduction that you're using, something like that. And if, as long as you survive, you cannot be staggered by it. It's similar to backstepping. You're in an animation, or backstepping, you, you take extra damage because you're in an animation. But yeah, it's a similar idea. You know, just the priority certain moves take. So yes, it is, it is a very manly way to do it. Uh, I, don't, I don't think I had the vitality to pull that off. Okay. Oh, I forgot to go back to the church. And yeah, okay. Huh, this is gonna be a problem. No, it's not. No, I, just need, I just need to get to the next, uh, next part. Yeah, the, the, I, when I knocked down the chandelier, there was a scroll that arrived, that appeared on the ground. I meant to go back and get that before I left, and I forgot to. Uh, that'll have the upgrade. And I also plan on, uh, just to save some time here, since I mentioned I gave myself permission to, I'm going to go ahead and reset back to 10 humanity with, with, the, uh, with the item glitch. And so I can, help, I can farm the, uh, the Silver Knights. I do plan on using both the sword and the spear for this. So it does save the time of popping those items individually and uh, hopefully grinding for them. Our first enemy is right here. It's 
Spirit guys are definitely harder. They have that 360 swing. They can duck behind their shields and do a lot of damage to you. Uh, they're not too bad if you, if you keep ahead of them, basically. But they can be tricky. They also have the most deceptively difficult parry of pretty much any attack in the game. Uh, when they pull their, their arm back and then, then thrust forward, it's I've, I've never been able to reliably punish them for it. This guy runs right in every time. Can't if you if you hit him hard enough to stagger him, that will break off break off his charge. There we go. Yeah, it looks like the mm, the halberds have a little less stagger, to I guess to help balance out their reach. So we're gonna go ahead and switch back to the. Uh, to the Flamberish. Actually, let's use the raw axe first and see if that's see if that'll do it. Yeah, definitely definitely risky here to turn human and Anne Rolando, the PvP hotspot of the game, but we definitely want to kindle this bonfire. We'll be doing a lot of progress to this level off this thing. Okay. So let's give this a try. Let's see if we can stagger a, uh, a knight with this. Can give me some insurance there in case it, in case it doesn't work. Okay, nobody blocked it, but look, it says on the count. Now let's try it on this guy. Jump the gun there. Love that goofy run they have. Okay, you can stagger them with two with a two hand with with a two handed uh, battle axe here. That is really good to know. Y'all see three two six? Yep, yeah, that yeah. I was human for all of about a minute, right? <laughs> The gear to the right here is Havel equipment. I cannot use it because it's too good. Okay. That's an occult club. Uh, the occult en uh, enchantment you know, in addition to, uh, <laughs> addition to letting you put pentagrams and stuff like that on, on all of your items, is what's used to kill gods in this game. Uh, oh, hello there. Gods being defined as the Silver Knights, the Sentinels. Yeah, th there's a little bit of lag there. He was able to just circle around behind me even though it didn't look like that on my screen. Four hits does kind of suck, but I have no stamina for it. Just something to keep in mind. Next up is, you might be thinking floor two, next up is floor three. The staircase has a kind of weird, you know, double split uh, layout here. What a lot of people will do is actually run down about halfway and jump across, you know, landing on the, the hallway here. That will cut out, well, not, the, not that particular one, uh, I think this one, yeah, and that, that'll be a shortcut to the boss. Uh, I like, you know, like I mentioned, I have to fight the Silver Knights anyway to get a chance of getting their drops, and I, I kind of like the level, so I usually don't do that, but you can if you're just speedrunning it. You do have to watch out for Silver Knights. Their spears can actually go through, jeez. Um, your spears can actually go through the walls. Ooh. I took a gamble there on that. That I would be able to finish him off when this third... Sorry about that. 
they get they have a combo of three stabs when they do that, and I had counted on being able to take the take that second hit, and then the combo would be over and I'd be able to finish him off. Uh, guessed wrong. They did just enough damage to kill me. 